Yeah, thank you so much. Uh, it is a privilege for me to be with you today, and thank you for the invitation. Uh, so, uh, <clears throat> as I know that uh, we will study together how can we share the gospel or build bridges with Muslim. So let's start with praying. Father, thank you so much for this time. Uh, we come just to, to glorify you in everything we, we do. I am praying for, for this time together to open our minds and our hearts to understand how can we build a relationship with the Muslims' friends and also how can we answer and be prepared for the things in their mind toward our faith, our Christianity. And uh, we know that is without you, we can do nothing. So please, Lord, uh, cover my weakness and, uh, and give uh, me uh, what do you want uh, my brothers uh, to learn uh, tonight. And uh, not only that, but also help every one of us to uh, uh, apply what we are going to learn today in a practical way and their relationship with the, their friends. Uh, so uh, we can we can see your your Holy Spirit just uh, working, using us, open the Muslims' minds to start to think, ask, discuss, and you reach them by your grace for your glory. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Uh, in fact, this topic, uh, uh, not only here, here in the States, there is no problem because there is no fear in this area. Uh, what I mean, there is no fear in this area because here uh, we grow up, that is, uh, we, we, we have liberty here. You can do anything, you can say anything to anybody with no fear. But in the Middle East, when it comes to share the gospel or uh, speak about uh, uh, Christianity with uh, any Muslim, it, it, there is, I can say there is uh, a big fear, there is a phobia about that. Why? I will give you just two true stories happened just last year or so. After ISIS, so... Uh, some young men around junior high have a drama at the Orthodox Church. And uh, some of them play as an ISIS member. It is around 13, 14, 12 years old. And they finished the drama. Somebody posted the drama on Facebook, they arrested this young men or the boys because they say something against Islam. Can you see what I'm saying? Uh, it is a drama. And this is what is happening. We don't say anything against Islam. And so on. And so on. It is very easy to have uh, uh, anybody or take anybody to the courthouse because he says something against Islam, something like that. So even pastors afraid to do so. And at the same time, you can hear the mosques everywhere uh, uh, every Friday teaching with a very big loud in the street. Yeah, they are worshiping three gods. Do you think God can have a son? And all Christians around them are hearing that and nobody care. So that's why I'm telling you when we come to this subject in, in the Middle East uh, uh, atmosphere, there is a big fear. And this hinders sharing the gospel 
for many years between Muslims in the Middle East. The believer is just afraid for that. And uh, I used to, to share these two verses of the Bible uh, uh, when I, I teach this course in the Middle East. Um, I learned two lessons on, on that. So the first one in Jeremiah 117, and just for the sake of time, God asked Jeremiah to, to go, to share, to speak. And he asked him, don't fear from them. And if you fear them, I will put more fear in your heart. God will, will let him be, you know, uh, can you see, you see the point here? So the first lesson I learned it, don't fear from them. Don't be afraid from them. The second lesson I learned it from a Presbyterian pastor. He is with the Lord now. He is amazing sharing the gospel with, with Muslims. And he shared me this lesson and he learned it from a Romanian pastor. He came to Egypt. So the Egyptian pastor asked him, teach me a lesson. You know, during Romania, during the communist, and there is a fear about that. So he told him, don't afraid from them. He said, he replied, I learned it from Jeremiah 117. I need another lesson. And he told him, if you will not fear from him, from them, they will fear you. The reaction from them, if you have a courage to speak, they will fear you. So I, I took these two lessons in, in my life when I started ministering, uh, in, you know, between Muslims. Even until now, we have uh, some Muslims. We are, I am pastoring in, in Egypt, and uh, I met with the family in Shrook after you left uh, this, that family, uh, they are going to Lebanon and they discover that their names hinder not to travel from the country. And they spend around eight hours in the secret police at the airport until now they are in Egypt. So, <clears throat> If you would like to share the gospel, don't be afraid. And also the second thought I would like to, to share you, the great commission, God asks us to go preach the gospel. To whom? I'm asking you. All nations. All nations in, in Greek, all ethnic groups, not German, not the states, not every small with the similarity, ethnic groups. Even in, in Islamic world, there is a small ethnic groups. There is Sunni, Shia. So God is asking us to share the gospel with everybody. And in this case, you can't remove any ethnic group from from the world, from all the nations. So we need to be ready to share the gospel with everyone we meet, even if he is Muslim. And Jesus said that, I am sending you like sheep between fox. And this is uh, the call. <laughs> Uh, 
And uh, I remember the saying that is probably the fox will eat the sheep. And the reaction of that, yeah, that's good. If the fox will eat the sheep, so results of the sheep inside his belly, he will change it to be a sheep. So uh, even it costs us our life, but it will result the other person to change, to come to Christ. And we, uh, we, we have, you know, many, 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 many stories we can, I can share you that is uh, uh, even after many persecution, uh, many people killed and the people who killed the believers come to Christ. I, I think all of us can, can know that through the history. I would like to share with you also, uh, we are not going uh, in systematic. I'm just giving you, as we have uh, around two hours or less, uh, the most important points we can use, you can use in your, in your ministry. Muhammad. Muhammad is the prophet of the Islam. So I think you, you uh, the paper I, I sent to you, Muhammad has uh, uh, two uh, sides. Muhammad born in 570, died 632. You can follow up with the paper I sent to you. Uh, uh, so Muhammad, if you, if you look to, uh, to his genealogy, uh, you will discover something amazing that is uh, um, half of his family uh, <clears throat> so the first grandfather has two uh, children and then two children uh, then the the right side uh, you can see uh, a name called uh, Waraka. Waraka. Did you see it? Waraka is a pastor, is a Christian minister. And uh, uh, his, his, uh, his name or his uh, Waraka. Ibn, Ibn means son of Nofil. Waraka Ibn Nofil or Waraka son of Nofil. It is, he is famous in the Islamic uh, and there is a saying that since Waraka died, there is no more revelation to Muhammad. Because Waraka was the source of all the, the spiritual things that Muhammad did. Waraka married, make the, the marriage ceremony between Muhammad and his first wife. Between Muhammad and Khadija. So I will tell you the story of Muhammad and Khadija. Just uh, uh, Khadija, uh, uh, a business uh, woman, and if you see Khadija, she is a cousin of Waraka. Uh, she is around forty years old. She is a businesswoman. She is very rich. Muhammad uh, uh, was uh, very poor. And uh, there is many situation about even his birth and even uh, how many months or how many years did he stay in his mother's womb. They said his mother delivered him after two years of her, her pregnancy. And they said this is a miracle. 
uh, but there is, uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, there is many, you know, funny situation. And when you think and study it, even in a sign, in, in in a science, it's not logic. But the answer, no, you can't say that it is Muhammad. <laughs> so anyway, Khadija was very uh, uh, rich, and she has. Uh, uh, merchandise and then uh, uh, she she told people that is yeah I can marry Muhammad Muhammad was 25 years old uh, then they told him go ask Khadija she would like to marry you she said I am I am poor in the family and uh, do you think Khadija will accept me uh, so she accepted him and uh, as I said, it looks like this was a Christian, not the, uh, a, a pure Christianity, but some sort of a Christian marriage because he did not marry other women during Khadija's life. So Waraka married both of them. And also for uh, your information and your uh, uh, something to laugh just to put in your uh, mind, not to share the uh, any any Muslim, just but to know that. So Muhammad, he was worshiping in the mountain. Then he he saw the uh, something like the angel, and he start to to scare and uh, afraid and uh, uh, so uh, he he came to Khadija he said I saw I saw the angel and I am scared he was very tall I am I am I am I'm, I'm it is uh, scareful for me so she told him come come Muhammad yeah but but your your head here Khadija is saying to him. So he slipped in her, in her, in her uh, leg. Can you see him? He said, no, I can't see him. He is not, uh, I, I can't see him. So come close. He came close. Can you see him? No. So she uncovered, he put his head underneath to see her, her body. He said, yeah, I can, I can see him. So she told him, it is a malik, it is not a Satan. So they went to <coughs> Waraka. Waraka said, he will be the prophet of the nation. I don't know that if Waraka was thinking that he will be his disciple, or something else. But this is the Islamic documentation of the first time Muhammad saw the angel. And saying that is because the angel, the angel will not, you know, will be shy in the woman's body uh, that's why he is an angel. Uh, you see the point uh, that they are saying it. So, this is the blessing of Muhammad. <laughs> <laughs> So uh, this is uh, the start of Muhammad. And then uh, uh, Waraka start to teach him something. And uh, uh, there is uh, a saying that uh, there is no revelation after Waraka's death.
And this is a very big question mark to all Muslims scholars. Why there is no revelation after Waraka's death? Why? Why? You will have no answer. And also for your information, during this period of time, Muhammad tried to to uh, uh, suicide and to kill himself many times after Waraka's death. After Khadija's death, he started to, uh, uh, you know, marry many, many women. Okay, so this is just general, uh, this is very important. Uh, in Islam, there is Quran and the Hadith. Quran is God's book from God. Hadith is saying of Muhammad. So this is the, the two pillars in Islam, Quran, Hadith. Hadith in the Arabic language, talking. So the talking of Muhammad. So Muhammad tells something to somebody and this is become Hadith, the talking of Muhammad or the teaching of Muhammad. So this is, you know, very important in, in, in Islam. So if we come to Hadith, uh, <clears throat> Muhammad died uh, uh, 632, something like that. Let's say 630. There is two famous hadith books, Bukhari and Muslim. Bukhari. Bukhari written 870. 870. And Bukhari, it looks like he is, he was from Afghanistan. And the other one called Muslim, a person called Muslim. So hadith, this is the, 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 the teaching of hadith. So they go through generation. So somebody said, uh, Bukhari. Bukhari said, I heard Sam Miles from Chris Best, from Chris So from so and so and so and so and so and so and so that Muhammad said so and so. Uh, you see that uh, it goes to the now, uh, if you go in math, 800, even just 800 uh, from, from 600, not 30, 50, 150 years. How can we trust this, you know, as not uh, 10 years or 20 years? And the problem in Islam that is Hadith is taking ISIS from Hadith. Okay, what about Quran? 
Quran has two sections. Quran. We have Mecca. We have Medina. Mecca, uh, both of, of them are cities in Saudi Arabia. Mecca is the start of Muhammad. <clears throat> and in Mecca, if you, if you think what is the community in Mecca, in Mecca you will find some Jews, some Christianity, even heresy Christianity, because there is a, uh, a false teaching, uh, what, we, what is known that is, they uh, believe that is God, Mary, Jesus, this is the Trinity in, 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 in Mecca. So there is some Christianity, some heresies Christianity, and uh, Arab. So in, in Mecca, the atmosphere between this different, you know, beliefs. So you can find in Quran, in Mecca Quran, that is all the verses that is say, love the other people, the people of the book, Jews and uh, Christians. They are the people of the book. If you have doubt of what I am telling you, ask people, who is reading the book before you, Jews and Christians, in Mecca? When he immigrated to Medina, he would like to gain the Arabs in Medina beside himself. So in Medina, you will see, kill them. Don't have a relationship with them. <clears throat> and there is two words uh, I would like you to know in, in Arabic called Nasikh Mansukh. Nasikh Mansukh. Nasikh is just writing. Mansukh is just to remove it. So they saying Medina Nasakit or remove or upgrade or change Mecca. Is it clear for you? It is like that. It is like that. But it, at the same time, both in the same Quran and not and also in the same chapter you can say one verse Mecca one verse Medina so even the chapter itself contradict itself because there is Nasikh and Masukh and if you say that is there is a verse called that is love Christians because they are the people of the book said no this is mecca verse medina verse said that is even don't say hi to them every christmas every easter in in the middle east this is, uh, the the imams say that it is not allowed for muslim to say merry christmas to christians Can you think about that? It is just because of Medina section of Quran.
In Islam, there is no adoption. Why there is no adoption in Islam? I'm asking you. Nobody knows. Ah, for sure, I'm, I know that. Uh, but this is the story. Muhammad has no sons, has a son by adoption. And he, his son married a very beautiful woman, Zainab bint Gash. Her name is Zainab. One day, Muhammad went to his son's house and he saw his daughter-in-law uh, working at home, so he desired her. So he left thinking about her. Then he went second time she was washing the clothes and uh, he saw her, her legs. So he desired her more. When his son come to him, uh, so he told Zainab, when my son will come tell him, I am telling him, change your home. So when he came, he told him, your, your dad, the prophet, was here. And he, what did he tell you? He tell, he, she told him, change your home. He said, okay, you divorce. Change your home, change your wife. So he divorced Zainab. Few days, Muhammad married her. That's why there is no adoption in Islam because of this situation. Because Muhammad divorced his daughter-in-law by adoption, by the son by adoption, and he married her. This is hidden for the Western people. <laughs> I believe uh, uh, not everybody in, in Western countries, you know, even know about that. It is not allowing the Middle East to adopt any, any, any orphan because of this story of, of Muhammad. Yeah, 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 because a verse in Quran came, how can you do this? Uh, there is, you know, uh, a situation in Quran because uh, in Quran you will see solution for everything. God said that. Uh, even uh, Aisha, Aisha is the youngest wife of Muhammad. Aisha, he, he married her, she was nine years old. Uh, this is very important also to know before we start for the, 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 the subject we need to understand about uh, uh, the dialogue with them or, or discussion with them. Aisha, Aisha, daughter of Abu Bakr, one of his leaders. So uh, uh, he, he uh, engaged her, she was uh, six years old, and then married her, she was nine years old. And uh, when you discuss with the Muslims, he will tell you, yes, nine years old in Saudi Arabia during that time, the body was, was bay, uh, you know, mature enough for, uh, is not true. Even the body mature enough, the mentality, the character is not mature enough. But anyway, uh, Aisha told Muhammad, I wonder about your God, that he is giving you every, uh, giving you a verse just to, to satisfy your lusts. 
if you lost anything, so you have a verse for it. If you desire anything, you have a verse for it. What is that God? So there is a verse on Quran that is, if any woman, any woman would like to dedicate herself to the prophet, he can have sex with her, only him, no one else. This is the verse in Quran. So everything Muhammad desire, there is a solution. What? A verse in Quran. A verse in Quran. In Quran itself, what is the the uh, the ingredients of Quran? Poetry. There is a poetry from Saudi Arabia. People during that time, uh, one of the people who writes uh, poetry came to Muhammad's daughter. She told her, "Your dad wrote what my dad wrote and wrote in in Quran." So poetry and also wrote about the idols. You know, Salman Rushdie uh, the, the, from, from Pakistan or Afghanistan wrote a satanic verses book. He just quote two verses from Quran, just two verses, and wrote his book, his dissertation about that book because Muhammad used uh, the three idols in, 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 in Medina Ayat wal Uzza wa Manat, this is three gods, idols in, in Medina written in, in Quran. And he said that is they are <clears throat> uh, uh, three gods, we can trust them and we can pray uh, uh, for them. There is a quotation from Christianity, there is a quotation from uh, Judaism, there is a uh, uh, from the uh, Christian uh, heresies. Uh, there is, you know, from everywhere in, in Quran. And uh, a funny thing is that is Muhammad's uncle, his uncle was against Muhammad. So there is a chapter in Quran about his uncle. I will just tell you the meaning of this chapter. <laughs> His uncle's name, Aba Lahab. Aba Lahab. Aba is the father of Lahab, is the, the flame. So he, he wrote that is, at the end, Aba Lahab will be in hell. His wife will carry the wood for him to be fired. <laughs> so it is just because he was against him. There is a chapter against his uncle. And uh, you will, you will, you know, amazed that they believe there is an original Quran in Lawh al-Mahfuz in the original tablet in heaven. And just God move it from heaven to uh, earth to Muhammad. But if you ask them, is there Nasikh Mansukh? There is two versions in heaven or one version, you will have no answer. You will have no answer. But anyway, this is just, uh, you know, regular uh, uh, things, uh, general uh, things about it, uh, uh, Islam. And uh, just uh, uh, very uh, little of the foundation. And uh, I will add also to this, what is written in Hadith, what is very funny Hadith, very funny Hadith. You, you need just to remember that. Uh, and uh, during the brotherhood in Egypt, the government brotherhood, they, they asked, many people did that. Muhammad did, said that is the, the urine of the apple, uh, the, the camels uh, uh, will heal you from any sickness. 
the urine and the milk of the camels will he heal you from any sickness. Uh, believe me, I saw a woman drove to uh, a city after Alexandria in the desert, waiting with the man who is selling urine, uh, uh, camel's urine and milk to people. And I saw her by my own eyes on, on TV, just under the camel and to get her, her cup and drink the urine because she has kidney failure. And they told her, Muhammad said that. There is a Muslim physician said this is not good we need to to educate people but the imams came against him you know more than the prophet what prophet i took the urine to the lab and i discovered what is in the urine <laughs> it was you know it was um, you know, what we call mess. This is the funny, the other funny thing that is hadith from Aisha. Aisha is the youngest wife of Muhammad. So, if any woman has a man uh working with her at the house or at the office or at and the, both of them are alone let him suck her uh, breast so he become like her son so there is no problem that she will be together, they will be together. And they call it feeding breast for the adult. This is the hadith. And uh, I, you see, uh, you are, uh, and uh, one, <laughs> one of the Christians, uh, uh, teaching against Islam has a TV show and speak about this hadith. And uh, there is uh, a very, very famous Muslim uh, uh, lady called Hala. She has her talk show and she invited the imams. <laughs> She was amazing. So she was sitting in the uh, program and around six imams around her. And she said, I heard pastor so is telling about this hadith. I need to know, is this hadith correct or no? So now I have a driver, I have a chef at home. What should I do with him, with them? So the imam told him, do with him what is written in hadith. What? Yeah, let him suck your, what? She did by this way, what? So the reaction of the Imam is not my saying, it is the hadith. So this is uh, just, uh, uh, by the way, the hadith is thousands of hadith, millions of hadith about every subject in, 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 the, in, in life. Uh, okay, by the way, I will, uh, you know, at any, any time I will just uh, try to find this on YouTube. I will send it to you just to see the situation 
of uh, uh, this uh, Dr. Hala. She was a physician and she worked in media and she was, she was, you know, very, very good woman. And she faced them. And because of this situation, they kicked her from the country for a period of time. <laughs> Okay, but come to the Bible or to the gospel. Do we need to think to share the gospel with them? For you, people has, you know, all this false teaching or, you know, all this, uh, uh, even is not, uh, is not false teaching. It is not teaching at all. <laughs> uh, they need something they need something in their lives because they are empty nothing in their souls nothing in their mind nothing in their hearts but what quran and islam is teaching them about christianity there are four topics in their brain and their mind any muslim Everywhere in the world, it has these four topics against Christianity. And these four topics, uh, it is the most important topics just you to understand and to be ready when you speak with any Muslim to be ready to answer anyone or all of them or whatever. The first one is the Bible. The corrupted Bible. Corrupted Bible. We have Bible and if we change it, we corrupt corrupted it number two Jesus is not a son of God so the person of Jesus Christ Jesus only teacher Prophet, not the Son of God. Number three, Trinity. God is one, not three. Number four, cross. Jesus did not crucify. So any Muslim, they, they taught him that, the Imams taught them that. Even if you give the Bible to, to anyone, he will not take it. He just says, no, it is corrupted Bible. It's not the true Bible. The hardest one, the crucifixion. Why?
Let me just search a verse in Quran. Because in Quran, there is a clear verse, Quranic verse, that said that is, they did not crucify him, but it looks like they did so. It is Surah 4, chapter 4, verses 157. <clears throat> that they said, we killed Christ Jesus, the son of Mary, the messenger of Allah, Allah is God. But they killed him not, nor crucified him. But so, if it was made to appear to them and those who differ thereon, and so on. So, it is clear verses. That's why there is no discussion about that, because this is God's word. God said, that is, they, they said, we killed Christ, Jesus, the son of Mary the messenger of Allah, the messenger of God, but they killed him not, nor crucified him. And this is uh, their interpretation for this verse, not my interpretation, not a Christian interpretation. This is their interpretation for this verse. When they come to arrest Jesus, God took his image, both on Judas Iscariot, so they killed Judas Iscariot, thinking they are killing Jesus Christ. Is it clear? What, what happened to Jesus? God raised him to heaven before the cross. He's still alive in heaven. Surah chapter 4. You can Google it. You will find it. Uh, and you can have the verse itself. <clears throat> now. If I come to you, I am a Muslim, and you try to speak with me, and I will tell you, your Bible is corrupted. What is your reaction? I would like any one of you just come to convince me that is, you have the correct Bible, not the corrupted one. Anybody? I'm waiting. And I am a Muslim. <laughs> okay, let's make it easy. Uh, if, if this happened, 
uh, I will I will end with the technique to how how do you stop we start with Muslims but let's just understand how can we handle a brief about about each of this so for the corrupted Bible if he will tell me that is you have a corrupted Bible I said uh, probably yeah but I have some logic questions about that i would like to ask you and uh, i would like you to think with me uh, about that number one when was corrupted when and when i say when i mean before 600 ad or after 600 ad before islam or after islam when Number two, who corrupted it? Who? The Western Church or Eastern Church? The person or a group of people that in, in, in the Middle East or in Europe? There is no Am America during that time. Yeah. <laughs> So, uh, who corrupted it? The logic question number three, why? Why do you think they corrupted it? Why do you think they changed the Bible? And the last question is, yes. So if I understand correctly, you start with the question, can we agree that the Bible originally corrupted? Was incorrupt, yes. And then lead him down through these points, where, when, yes. And how, why. Yes. But establish first, yes, we all agree that there was a incorrupt yeah yeah we i said yeah let's say it is corrupt who did this for for you as a muslim who corrupted it uh, uh, do you have accurate that is this section of people and i will i will answer the the questions so it will it will be clear in a minute so uh, the last question is uh, we believe that is quran is the word of god according to his belief And we believe that there is original Bible, Old Testament, Torah. And we believe that there is original New Testament or the Gospel. And all of them from God. So my last question is, do you think God can let his word for anyone to change who can change the word of God and just God let him do that or in another way do you think God allow anybody to change control his word Because if we agree this about the old or the Bible or the gospel or whatever, we will accept the same to Quran. So the question number one, when? Is it before Islam or after Islam? Before 600 AD or after 600 AD? If he say before, he will have a big mistake. Why? Because Muhammad himself, one day they brought a woman caught in adultery and asked him, what shall we do with this woman? He said, what is her religion? He said, she, she is Jew. 
he said, bring me their book. So they bring them him the Torah, the Old Testament. So Muhammad prayed his prayers. And after he finished, he put his hand up on Torah. And he said, I believe in you. I believe what is written in you. And he asked them, somebody read for me what is written regarding the adultery. They stone her. Said, do for her what is written in Torah. So now, is this was corrupted Torah or not? That Muhammad used. Uh, are you with me? Yeah. And also, before 600 before AD, the Christianity was everywhere. Everywhere. Now, if the Christianity everywhere were with the same Bible, who can corrupt it? Do you think the Middle Eastern people corrupt it? Do you think the Western people will allow the Eastern people to, to change the Bible? The Christians fight each other about different doctrine. But they have the Bible. They have the same Bible. Uh, when I say the same Bible during the uh, 400, 500, 600, uh, this, this time. I'm not talking about the virgin. I'm talking about the Bible itself. So they, the, there is many problems in the church. Is Christ God or not? There is so and so. But there is no doubt that they have the word of God. This is before Islam. And also, the Bible was everywhere. And this is a, a very, very new question uh, came to me in, in last uh, around uh, seven years or so. Uh, I used to, to tell him, can you bring me the uncorrupted version? Do you have it? He said, no. Uh, so how can, how did you know that is this one is corrupted? Because if it is corrupted, so I have the uncorrupted one, so I can compare each other, compare this with that. Uh, most of the answer, most of the answer will tell you the gospel of Barnabas. This is the true gospel, the true Bible. And why they are saying is that? Do you know why? Because the gospel of Barnabas is telling that Jesus said that is Ahmed, Muhammad, will come after me. Uh, did you read the gospel of Barnabas? Is anybody read it? I, I think it is also, it, you can Google it. I, I read it. Uh, it is... Uh, it is miserable book. Miserable book, I mean, even uh, because in the Gospel of Barnabas, even write something different than the Islam believes. We believe in, in three heavens, right? Islam believes in seven heavens. The Gospel of Barnabas wrote about nine heavens. So even, even the Muslim, if he is accurate in his belief, he will reject it because it is against even what is written in Quran. So it is just one, one, one point. The Gospel of Barnabas written around uh, uh, 1700 something is very, very new uh, and is written in Spain. Uh, not in, in even in the Middle East. So also, I used to you to to challenge my Muslims friend by this way. Did you read this 
book by yourself and you discover it is corrupted? He said, no. How did you know? He said, the imam told me that. No, but you are a smart man. You are an you are engineer. You are a doctor. You are a teacher. You are, uh, at least you have a high school. Uh, so you can think. Read it. And if there is any corruption, let us discover it together. Just try it. The problem of the Muslims that they accept what their leaders told them with no discussion, with no thinking. This is a very dangerous issue. No thinking at all. Here we can even, uh, our pastor, Pastor Sammy said, you know, check it, discover it by yourself. If I'm teaching you the truth or not. And the Islamic mentality, don't argue what I'm telling you. It is absolute true. And then the adult breastfeeding is true. Uh, all these are true because I'm telling you, I know better than you. Even the urine of the camel, it is true. I'm telling you, <laughs> did you try it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah from the funny things I forget to tell you that if you have a problem with your wife what is your reaction the Quran said don't sleep with her and if the problem will not solve beat them it is clear verse, beat them. And when Muhammad, uh, I think Muhammad Ali, one of the uh, Quran interpreter, when he interpreted, he said that beat them softly. Try to make it softly. <laughs> but the original verse, don't have sex with them, beat them. And by the way, in the Middle East, you can find this easily. And if a husband beat his, his wife, is not allowed for her even to report to that because the Quran said that. So the Bible, uh, there is also some Quran verses, uh, if, you, if, if we need to use it, and uh, if, you, uh, if I use it, and he will tell me that is use Quran, do you believe in Quran? I said, no, I use it as a language, uh, because if I speak English and you speak Arabic, we have only two options. Even I speak your language or you speak my language. So you don't know my language. You don't know my Bible. I am trying to approve my, approve my point in your language in Quran. But I don't believe in Quran. I don't believe that Quran is the word of God or came from God at all. Because there is no, there is many contradictions. There is many uh, uh, mistakes. Uh, uh, they said that is God sent it in the Arabic language. The original language is Arabic for Quran. There is more than seven words in Quran is not origin original Arabic. At least seven. Even the gospel, the word gospel. The gospel in Gil, they wrote it in Gil. In Arabic means the good news. It is not written good news in Quran, written gospel. Gospel is not Arabic word. It's not Arabic word at all. So how come God sent it uh, Arabic Quran? How, how come? So there is many, many, uh, 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 you know, problem in, in Quran as a, in language. And uh, I don't believe it, is, uh, uh, it, it came from God. But I use it 
just to show you the truth. So there is many verses in Quran that say that is God will protect his word. So if God said, I protect my word, what the word that God will protect him, uh, protect it. So the Old Testament, New Testament, and the Quran. So if God will protect all his word, do you think he will protect the Quran? and will not protect the other words? Do you think so? So if he said, I will protect my word, it means he will protect the Old, New Testament, and Quran. If, it is, if the Quran is the word of God also. The personality of Jesus Christ. Is he son of God or God or, uh, or a prophet or teacher? Uh, the problem of son of God, they are thinking it is a physical birth in their mind. So the first reaction when I speak with any Muslim, I said, the sonship between Jesus and God is not a physical, sexual relationship at all. It is a spiritual relationship. God did not have a wife, never have a wife. God is not a man. God is a spirit. Because son, it means God married, uh, married a woman. And for, for this, I just ask for the miracles that Jesus did. Because Jesus did miracles only God can do. Like creation, Jesus created. And uh, not only in, in, our, in our Bible, but also in Quran, I'm using both. And this is the funny uh, stories about Jesus in, in, in Quran. That Jesus used to, while he was in childhood, bring a mud or clay and make a bird. Then the bird fly so <laughs> so he the, the word yakhluqu min at-tin wa hay'at at-tayr bi'iznillah create from a clay like a bird by the permission of god so this is the verse so if even jesus you know create from the clay who can create only god only god and uh, i i use the uh, the jesus even in, in quran there is a verse in quran that is every person during his birth say satan kicked him in his side except Jesus, the son of Mary. So I'm asking, why? Why? Why Jesus, Satan, was not able to kick him in his side like any other man or any other woman? I, you know, why is that? He has no answer. I can tell the answer because he is God himself. Christ in Quran came more than Muhammad. 
mentioned in Quran more than Muhammad. Christ, Jesus, Isa came even, even triple than Muhammad. Mary came more than Muhammad. There is a chapter in, in Quran for Mary, Surah 19, chapter 19. Also, for Jesus, the verse in Quran that God sent his word and his spirit to Mary. Now, I use this to uh, compare what the difference between God and his word or God and his spirit. If God sent his spirit to Mary, what does that mean? So, there's, if I, I use also to say, if I take your spirit, what will happen? He will tell me, I will die. So, it means that spirit is the source of life. So, if we say God's spirit came to Mary, it means that God himself came to Mary, according to what is written in, in Quran. I will skip Trinity. I will speak about the crucifixion. Uh, because as I said, crucifixion is the clear verse. Um, one of the famous Imams have six points about crucifixion. Six point, and uh, his name is Al Razi. Al Razi said that is if we said God takes the image. Uh, he is interpreting the verse in Quran that Jesus Christ did not, they did not kill him nor crucify him, but it appeared to them that they do so. So he said, I am thinking just for this verse, if God did that, took the image of somebody of Jesus and brought it to somebody, it means God deceived people and the God is not a deceiver. You see the point? This is the first point of Fakhreddin al-Razi, the Imam al-Razi of interpreting this verse, or he said, I have six problems with this verse. I would like to understand them. Number one is this, uh, God can do this. So it means God is a deceiver. He deceived people. Uh, and uh, is not is not logic and the number two if god would like to protect jesus he can do nothing he just protect him he doesn't need to put his image to someone else or uh, no he just uh, he will stay still and no one can catch him because god is protecting him because if we say that so it means God was not able to protect him, but God can do anything. The third one, and I will just uh, use only three. I don't like to give a lot of information for you. The third one says that it's God is not just if he did that. Because why? He let somebody to die to replace somebody. Uh, it is not just at all. You see the point of, of the, this imam? If he let Judas crucified uh, instead of, of Christ, 
So it means God was not just in this situation. But God is just. He never do that. This is what his interpretation for, for this, this verse. And also, this is for, for the verse, also 600 AD, all the Christians believed that Jesus Christ died, crucified, and even celebrate every year his resurrection. 600. And then you come, 700 or 600 something, you tell me, all oh, this 600 was wrong or was not true. It's not logic at all. It's not logic at all. The history, the, 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 the place in Palestine, the, uh, the, the people in the story and uh, the documentation and all these people for 600 and you just come, tell me no, it's not logic at all. Okay, any questions? Uh, I just give information, information, information was no technique until now. But I just would like to, to hear any, any questions or any feedback. About whatever Christ made is life out of clay. It is, uh, okay, let me give you the English. It is uh, Surah 3, chapter 3, uh, verse 49. And a messenger to the children of Israel, I have come to you with the sign from your Lord and that I make for you out of clay as it were uh, the figure of a bird and so on. Any other question? Okay, how can I start with uh, the gospel? Number one, build a relationship. Relationship is very important. And we afraid to build a friendship or relationship with the Muslims. No, we, we need to build this relationship with them. Uh, uh, so we can, we can speak, we can dialogue, we can... Uh, uh, my son-in-law uh, built a good relationship with uh, his, his friends. And one of them from Saudi Arabia, and he took him uh, uh, with, he took his friend with him while he went for hunting. So uh, my son-in-law killed a deer 
So his friend said that is if I will not kill the animal in Sharia law, I will not eat with it. He said, okay, well, do whatever you want. It's no problem. So the animal killed already, but his friend go with the knife and he just uh, uh, killed it. And uh, what is uh, what what is known as halal? So halal is just while he is killing the animal said, La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulallah. That's all. This makes the animal or the killing or the meat is halal. So he allowed him to do that. Even the animal, is, he did not argue. He said, what is the, he, he, it is dead already. What you are doing, it is nothing. But he said, yeah, okay. And I can tell you, this relationship continued for a years, um, even until now. So uh, f- it is not our responsibility that they will become a Christian. It is God's work. It is not our, our work. Our, our job is to show love and to share the gospel. And how can I do that? Maintain this relationship. Build this relationship. And even it comes to disagreement, don't cut the relationship. Avoid the discussion. Avoid the title or the topic we are talking about. Forget it. Forget it now. It will come later on. But if you cut your relationship because we discuss about some issue and we did not come to the point of agreement, and you will say, okay, no more friendship. I will have no more chance to speak with you. But even I will agree with you, even something wrong, but just to, to keep this relationship. No, we will speak about it one more time, second time, third time, fourth time, until the Holy Spirit will work in your heart. So the first very important point build a relationship they are they are good people forget the eyes forget the they are they are like us and by the way god bought hunger in their hearts to know the truth the problem is their leaders not them their leaders taught them that is even to not to discuss with anybody. International students, before they come, they gave them lessons. Don't eat pork. Don't go to the churches. Don't do so. Don't do so. So they are coming with this mentality. So when he comes or she comes and see love, acceptance, respect, uh, uh, his mind changed. And I think Bernu can tell us many stories uh, through his ministry between the international student ministry. You know, they came, uh, they used to come with a lot of agenda because they are thinking you will go to the Western world and they would like to change you to be a Christian. So be, be cautious of everything. And when he comes, no, I, I, don't, I don't care if you come Christian. I would like you to come Christian for you, not for me. And it is up to you, not for me. I just would like to let you know what is Christianity is. That's all. So building a relationship. Number two, questions. Uh, I can tell him, I would like you to tell me more about Islam. I would like to understand it. I don't know about Islam. So if you tell him that, he will be very happy because he will be thinking that he will convince you to come to Islam. He will preach you the Islam, which is, will be amazing. Let him preach you Islam. Now, wow, this is different that I know. You know, we have so and so and so and so and so. 
Sometimes I, when I build the relationship, I can tell him, uh, what do you think, Muhammad or Ali or Ahmed, whatever? Tell me about Islam, I will tell you about Christianity. And we would like just to know each other. But that's all. Uh, I, I remember one time I told one of the people I shared the gospel with them, I don't care about Christianity at all. I don't care about Islam. I care about myself. If I discover that Islam is the truth and is Islam will bring me to, to heaven, I will be a Muslim in a moment. Because what benefit I will gain from Christianity if I will die, I discover I am in hell because the Christian is not the true way. So what is the benefit? I care about myself. So if I try to show me what do you have and let us discover the truth together. Uh, so we go together discovering the truth. And by the way, if the Muslim is honest, studying Quran about Christ, he will discover that Christ is the son of God and God himself in Quran, if he is honest. If he is honest. Uh, the good thing also I can do with the with my my Muslim friend is reading the Bible together. When he asks me, uh, sometimes I can say, you know what? I think let let's read it together, and I can open the verse, give it, give the the book to to him, I, and ask him, this is the verse. Would you read it for us? So, uh, the word of God is powerful. Very important point, don't condemn him for any mistake he will do or any bad action he, he will do in, in your conversation. Don't condemn him and don't say, what? No, relax. Give him a chance. He is the first time in his life just to speak about it what you are talking about together because he can't do that in his in his country uh, in in denver one of the arabic people i pastored in denver before i i moved to kansas city she came to christ she was from saudi arabia uh, their, their, her family did not come to attend her, her wedding because of, of that. After 10 years, they start to call by phone. Her dad has a doctorate degree from the States. And he told him, she told him, Dad, you, you know, you have a, a PhD just to make a, a research between Quran and the Bible, just to make academic research. And you will discover the truth. He said, a PhD from the States. He said, no, no doubt that the Quran is the word of God. I don't have to do that. Can you see the, the mentality? A man who came, study, got his degree, and leave the state, even with thinking that the Quran, no doubt that it is, uh, it is not under searching at all. <coughs> uh, the problem, uh, uh, you know. Our neighbor are Muslim uh, here in, in, in North Kansas City. 
we invite them for a meal. We would like to build a relationship with them. And I don't know that if they are Christian, Muslim, uh, atheist, I don't know. But I, I knew that is, they are from northern Iraq. So they came uh, for the meal. And uh, uh, the first question is, is there any pork in the, in the meal? I said, no, there's no pork in the meal. So uh, we eat together. And uh, I start to speak with them about Christ, about the church. And they replied, we go to the mosque. I said, okay, that's fine. Which mosque you go to? So continue. After I come, I just give them, just before I come, I, I called him and give him a gift from Egypt, from my trip. But just building the relationship building the relationship how long it will take probably take years but it is benefit and it will open a chance to share the gospel at least they can see your life your love and they will start to think why do you do that because your action as a Christian, as a true Christian, will touch his or her heart. Because this is not the, 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 ac the action in the Islamic world. Our love, there is no any other love you can compare it with it because the source of our love is the Lord Jesus Christ. Because we love just for love. I, I'm not expecting to receive back from the one I, I am loving him. I'm just showing the love of Christ to them. So there is no comparison with that. So this love can open any door. Can open any door. Can touch any heart. Probably will take time. Yeah, that's fine. Praying for, for people and, uh, you know, just praying for them every time we, we meet, every time we, we talk, um, God can, can use that. Uh, there is a girl uh, came to Christ only because her friend in high school, she compared her family with their family. She said, my friend, is, my friend was a Christian, and I, I saw the treatment between her, her dad and her mom, and I compared it between my dad and my mom, and I start to think, why is that? Why? Until I reached the college, I was able to study, to search, I become Christian. So even, even something like that, she was, she, her friend did not even share anything with her. Just she allows her to come. Farah, probably you saw Farah came to Midtown. Farah is, uh, used to go to the school with my children. And uh, uh, Farah, her sister, her mom, I, I want them to Christ. But Farah came to Christ because our, our family, because the relationship with our family. I won her here in the States a uh, uh, couple years ago. So even it takes years, but God is working. It needs patience. The ministry to Muslims needs patience. Because uh, uh, don't compare one came from the Islamic background with one came from a Catholic background. The Catholic background, at least he can read the Bible. At least he can hear the mass, even wrong or right, or he knows something about the Lord Jesus Christ. But uh, uh, the, the thing is, the Muslim is, is learning about Christ, is learning about Christianity. 
it is totally different. So it needs, uh, uh, you know, long suffering, patience, uh, time, praying, uh, uh, sacrifice, uh, your time, sometimes your money, because you invite him or her for a meal or uh, to drink or, or something like that. Uh, um, but when when their eyes will will open i can tell you he will just hug you and tell you thank you so much you you save my life you save my life uh i would like to close with a funny thing for the radical muslims uh, and it is true story you know they are telling people if you, uh, uh, you know, for the terrorism, uh, as soon as you die, uh, you will find hundreds or thousands of virgins waiting for you in, in heaven, in El Ganna. So in, in Egypt, uh, they, somebody reported that there is a terrorism guy is going to bomb himself in this area. So uh, they, you know, arrested him before he did that. And uh, they discovered that his, has covered his body with a piece of metal. Uh, so he asked, asked him, why you are doing that? He said, because uh, as soon as I will die, this part of my body, I would like it to be ready for the virgin. The, the officers died laughing. <laughs> can, can you imagine the, the stupidness of the teaching? Can, you, you, you see? And also, even for that, it is against all the, the attributes of God. You will have thousands, thousands of virgins. And every time you have sex with her, she will be a virgin. Even you have a sex with her every five minutes, she will be a virgin every time. So uh, just think, think about that. And if you think him, God in earth ask us not to have a fornication or adultery. Now he open uh, uh, houses for harlots or whatever we say it in language. In, in his place, do you think so? Uh, you see? So, uh, ministering to Muslim, I, I see it as a mis Middle Eastern person is very important and a very unique ministry for the Lord. Thank you so much for, for the time and I hope I, I benefit you. Uh, I don't know about you guys, but I feel like the thing that God put on my heart was talking about how to love you, talking about you. When you go to some ministry sessions, I think for years, I think about my ministry. Amen. Amen. Father, thank you so much for the privilege that we can we can take your word to the thirst people, the hunger people, the, the people that Satan closed their eyes, their their minds. 
blind their their eyes and their minds and not to see the truth and uh, because of, of of that that is he would like satan would like to you know to put them in this bondage so they will be with with him in hell but uh, thank you that you love this people you love these people and uh, even you died for for them and you are looking forward to see many of them in your kingdom uh, but but uh, i know uh, what is what is written that is you would like to use the church to to reach them uh, and now it it comes to us as a church and to us as a group here Father, I am praying to give every one of us courage and the passion to go to share your word to these people. Give us wisdom. Give us understanding. Even when it comes to argument, we may choose to lose the argument so we can keep the relationship with the person for a moment father please give us wisdom and open doors for us connect us with the people uh, that uh, uh, they they need to hear about you people need you and uh, we would like that uh, uh, to rejoice with with heaven uh, when some of them will come to you become members in your your kingdom in your body and uh, it will be rejoice it will be joy joyful time when we see that is after long time and then uh, the man or the woman will say it is clear for me that is salvation only through the Lord Jesus Christ. Help us, Lord, and also protect us. Give us word to say. Give us uh, uh, love to, to show. Give us passion to these souls. And all for your glory, Lord. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Thank you. Uh, by the way, guys, there is no any granity in Islam for heaven. There is no any granity for heaven. Uh, Surah 19, uh, verse 70, it says that is all Muslims will pass by hell. All Muslims will pass by hell. Can you can you imagine that? So so. We have, we have assurance for our salvation, for our eternity, not them.